I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Those of you that are following us here on live stream, if you'll just bear with me just for one moment, I actually need to uh, close down a few tabs here uh, because we don't want any echoing in the audio going on in the background. We do have very serious breaking news this evening. Uh, and uh, those of you that, have already, that are aware, we already know that U.S. Army chief threatens war with Russia. This is reported by Paul Joseph Watson uh, from InfoWars. He reports this. The Army Chief of Staff General Mark Miley warned last night the United States was ready to destroy its enemies in comments that were clearly directed at Russia. Well, the ante has been raised up. This is from the Russian insider. Uh, Yana was just here in the office confirming the, uh, the subtitles here that we know that everything is accurate and what's being said. I'm going to uh, play portions of it. We can use the subtitles rather than going through every single word by, by listening to it in Russian because most of you I know won't speak it. This is a Russian general. And <laughs> let me start it off for you. Of course, my basic Russian, I know the opening. Okay, he starts off by saying leaks in the Western media allege that Washington is considering launching airstrikes against Syrian government forces. So now we have that the uh, Russian uh, military is acknowledging that there is a planned attack on the Syrian government. Now, it's not just leaked sources. We also know that the Washington Post uh, has brought this out. We have stated it on Israeli News Live already. We noticed it in the fact that uh, Donald Trump uh, has clearly made the, the statement now saying that Russia has violated the ceasefire agreement uh, inside of Syria. Now, that kind of lets us know that more than likely, the presidential nominee, seeing as he is running very high in the polls, has been briefed on a possible strike on, the, on Damascus. All right, so he says that they have been, uh, they've said they've done this. Now, let's move forward with what he says next. History shows that certain leaks transform into real actions. Or as he says, not reactions, but he actually says realities. Uh, it, it transforms into actual realities. He goes on to say, a particular concern is information that the initiators of such provocations are representatives of the CIA and the Pentagon, our rep, uh, excuse me, who in September reported uh, the U.S. president on the alleged controllability of the opposition fighters, but today are lobbying for a kinetic uh, uh, scenarios in Syria. Okay, they use the, the Russian words there. Now, I want to note one thing that's very important in this broadcast here. The Russian general here that is speaking uh, is actually... They're, they're putting this up, Rush, the in, Russian insider is, is placing this up with the translations in English for you uh, so that you can see. And I believe that Russia is probably behind that because they want the world to know that Russia is taking this serious as well. Let's continue on. Okay, let's just move forward in the subtitles here for you. Um, all that blank space is those long words. He said, I would like to caution Washington's colleagues to conduct a thorough calculation of the possible consequences of such plans. Now, this here is a reverse threat. After we have seen the U.S. General uh, Chief make his threats to Russia, who obviously, as uh, Paul Joseph Watson says, was directed at Russia, now he is letting them know as well of the possible consequences of such plans if the Washington colleagues go forward. He says, today Syrian army has an effective air defense system, the S-200 and the BUK. Other air defense systems and their technical capabilities have been updated over the past year. All right. He's going to also get into the S-300, S-400. He says, furthermore, I warn American strategists that Russia currently has the S-400 and S-300 air defense system deployed to protect its troops and stationed at the TARDIS naval base, supply base, and the uh, Kamim air base. Okay. Um, he goes on a little further. 
They actually show some, uh, let me back up just a little bit here. He's going to show you some imagery of this. They're showing you on the inside the radius of the weapons reach reach may be a surprise to all unidentified flying objects. Now, he's alluding to the fact of when warplanes travel without transponders on. And he goes into that just a little bit more. Let me move forward on it. Russian air defense system crews are unlikely to have time to determine in an AE straight line the exact flight paths of missiles and then who the warheads belong to. As the U.S. general did his indirect threat, also the Russian general here, uh, don't, I, my wife could look at his name and tell you what it is. I cannot read Russian myself, but she could tell you. Uh, I didn't think to ask her of his name. Uh, we will get that here in a moment. But uh, that the warheads, uh, they, they don't know. So it is an indirect threat as well. And you're going to see in a moment more of a direct threat. It goes on. And all the illusions of the amateurs about the existence of the AE invisible jets will face a disappointing reality. Again, as I mentioned before, he is speaking about those that are flying without their transponders on. That's why he says the existence of invisible jets will face a disappointing reality. So if there's jets flying without transponders on where they cannot be identified, Russia's letting the, the U.S. coalition know they're going to take them down. Uh, this is Russia's uh, version of a no-fly zone, and I'm about to share with you, uh, I've already discovered moments ago, a very interesting article in the Russian language, not published in English. Uh, we've translated it as well, so you'll be able to see this in just a moment. We use Google Translate for the screen, but my wife looks at these things as well. All right, so he goes on to say, and now finally, the most important thing. Members of the Russian Reconciliation Center in Syria are working on the ground delivering aid, and communicating with a large number of communities in Syria. Okay. As a result of their work, 732 populated places and 100 thousands of Syria and hundreds of thousands of Syrians went back to a peaceful life. Okay. As he goes on about this, he says, therefore, any missile or airstrike on the territory controlled by the Syrian government will create a clear threat to Russian servicemen. And do we realize how serious this is, friends? Any area, because now he is saying, you have to understand, let's back up and look at what he said over here. 732 populated places. That's a lot of area in Syria. You know, hundred thousands Syrians went back to a peaceful life and that they have humanitarian aid workers, Russian workers working in all these areas so that any attacks in any of these areas, uh, any, there he says, therefore, any missile or airstrikes on the territory controlled by the Syrian government will create a clear threat to Russian servicemen. Now, right now we know where Russia's position is. If you strike anybody, any of the Syrian armed forces, as the U.S. is now considering once again on the table, Russia will take it as a direct, a direct attack on them because their men are working in amongst them. All right? Now, I am warning anyone that after U.S.-led coalition jets bombed positions of the Syrian government forces on September 17th in Deir ez-Zor, all right, we will take all necessary measures to prevent other American mistakes against Russian military or other military facilities in the territory of the Syrian Arab Republic. That's how serious the threat is. And I know we can say all day long, we can say all day long that 
uh, oh, Russia is doing this or Russia is doing that. We here on Israeli News Live, not only ourselves, many, many, many journalists have tried to bring this out. Uh, journalists, peace activists from the United States, from Britain, uh, have all been trying to bring this out, that we are getting a wave, uh, an enormous wave of propaganda uh, from the U.S. coalition that is there to try to justify uh, toppling Bashar al-Assad. We're not going to go into that in this broadcast here, but nonetheless, it is a very serious situation. And the one thing that would diffuse the entire thing is if the Obama administration would leave President Bashar al-Assad out of this, leave Russia out of this, and allow them to do as they were doing to begin with, and that was to bring the country, the, the, the country back under control. In the secret released uh, audio recording of John Kerry, he stated in there, the one that was recorded in New York, where he was meeting with Syrian opposition leaders there in, in, in New York City, in the United States, he stated that they knew Daesh or ISIS had taken over half of the country under control already. So they were watching and they were observing. They weren't doing anything to take them out. Although they had claimed to the American public they were there to get rid of ISIS, they never took them out. And neither did the Syrian government ever invite him there to do so. But instead he said they, they, they were hoping that this would bring about the opportunity to be able to negotiate with President Bashar al-Assad and a change in power. But he said they weren't expecting the Russians to step in. This countered the entire thing. Russia began to do major advancements in turning it around for the Syrian government. Even there have been Western analysts that have, uh, military analysts that have also agreed that Russia turned the tide for the Syrian government. That's when the U.S.-led coalition came in, and this is what has caused such a major mass loss of life in the Syrian country, is the actions of the Obama administration not willing to lose this part of the world. Now, let me share with you some other things that you're not aware of. This is not an English language paper. I'm using Google Translate so that you can see for yourself on the screen some of this that says here. This is from uh, DISCRED.RU, a Russian news website. Russia is ready to create a no-fly zone in Syria. This came out on October the 6th, today, the same as did the, uh, the Russian general speaking what he said. It says, the discussion of the possibility of U.S. strikes on positions of Syrian troops, anti-aircraft missile systems S-300 with Russia's delivered into Syria, air defense ground forces. This was stated by the... Uh, Izestia, a source close to the Russian military and diplomatic circles. Now, what I want to bring your attention to is down here in the paragraph, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, fifth paragraph, where you get the dark print here. However, as stated by the member of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Federation Council, Igor Morozov, <clears throat> in Syria, there are other air defense systems which will allow to cool some hotheads and create a no-fly zone over the country if necessary. So they're not saying they've created it, but the, the Russian government as well is looking to do the same thing that uh, John Kerry, the Secretary of State for, for the Barack Obama administration, they're wanting to create a no-fly zone, but now they say in order for them to create a no-fly zone, John Kerry said they would have to take out all of the... Um, uh, missile defense systems of the Russians. And I believe it was uh, uh, Ash Carter also saying to Congress, which the only way they could do it would mean a war with Russia and that of Syria. The Syrian, excuse me, the, uh, the Russians, on the other hand, from what the general is saying, they've already brought in all the defensive measures. They have the defense measures on the ground, and now they are speaking about doing a no-fly zone. Now the in a roundabout way, this is what the this is what the uh, the general is saying here. He's basically talking about a no-fly zone. If you're if if there if something's coming in and it's not it's got its transponders off to identify the type of aircraft it is, they're going to take it down. If they feel threatened, the Syrian government is threatened, they're going to take it down. Things are ready. They're active. 
and anything could happen at any moment. Remember, U.S. Army Chief threatens war with Russia. Paul Joseph Watson states here, Army Chief of Staff General Mark Miley warned last night the United States was ready to destroy its enemies in comments that were clearly directed at Russia. He said, I want to be clear to those who wish to do us harm. The United States military, just, military, despite all our challenges, despite our operational tempo, despite everything we have been doing, we will stop you and we will beat you harder than you have ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about it, said Miley. Other countries, Russia, Iran, China, North Korea, went to school on us, he says, adding they studied our doctrine, our tactics, our equipment, our organization, our training, our leadership. And in turn, they revised their own doctrines, and they are rapidly modernizing their military today to avoid our strengths and hopes of defeating us at some point in the future. I don't agree with that. Uh, maybe Iran, maybe North Korea. Yes, I could agree with it there. When it comes to Russia, yes, Russia did study, no doubt, as every military, including the United States, studies other governments' tactics, the way they move, the way they operate, how they think in order to be able to capitalize on it. The U.S. does the exact same thing. We're no different than any other country. But I don't think Russia has an intention of wanting just to take down the United States when they have been working with such a great partnership with the West, including even sending their own military troops to the United States, which, if I'm not mistaken, there's about 15,000 Russian troops in the U.S. as it is. So I, I can't agree with that. And there's still, even as of right now, I was watching the uh, press briefing by the uh, Secretary of uh, not Secretary of State, but by the, uh, by the uh, U.S. State Department today. I had not finished uh, listening to it to be able to bring everything out, but uh, it, it turns out that even right now in, in Moscow is uh, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State, uh, uh, Nolan, I believe that is. Yeah, Nolan is in Moscow right now speaking with their Russian counterparts there. So it's not that the Russian and U.S. are totally not in contact. And even John Kirby, for those who get that mixed up, John Kirby is uh, the, uh, the spokesman for the, for the State Department. He is not John Kerry. Uh, I know there's a lot of dispute over that. But anyway, John Kirby is uh, brought out today that after the Brussels meeting there that uh, uh, John Kerry, Secretary of State, and that of uh, Secretary, uh, uh, excuse me, the uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov had spoke briefly about Syria today. Even though their talks have been called off, they're still, they're still interchanged between the two. There is a possibility that a war could be averted. Maybe some of you guys could help put pressure on legislation in the United States government um, to have the Obama administration back down. It doesn't look like Hillary Clinton really wants to see that happen. Maybe she does need martial law to kind of slow down the momentum of Donald Trump, who is also running against her. Um, let's see here. I believe that is it for, for, this, for this evening, guys. Very serious news. I ask of you, one thing I'm asking of you tonight, share this broadcast everywhere you possibly can. It's a very serious news, very important news indeed. And if our news that we bring out is a blessing to you and you'd like to support this work, please do so at IsraeliNewsLive.org. Thank you, and thank you for watching. Thank you for those who are watching on live stream. Uh, haven't been able to get this run through the camera again in order to be able to get it to run smoother. We have too many internet options open at the time. Shalom, and God bless you.